Hi guys, um, here we are inside today. I'm going to do a quick a video on the difference between an amateur and a professional golfer, um, and just in general. So I'm going to do how the professional and how the amateur golfer um, use the, the the ground differently. So I mean, it's probably one of the most common things with building up power that the kinetic chain where you build up from the ground up the way, you've probably heard that many times but a lot of players use it differently and all the top players on tour have different ways of using it, you've got Rory McIlroy who has a double hip turn, that's why he increases that's why he has so much club head speed and he creates so much distance and you've got the average amateur golfer who doesn't use the ground correctly and they, they use more of the, the smaller muscles as opposed to the larger muscles but what I'm going to talk about is probably one of the most common faults related to that and within balance and in sequence of the swing. Um, so I've got some data here that I collected from just online from a survey and what I'm going to talk about is the average amateur sets up to the golf ball with, so normally when you're hitting a driver um, you want more weight on your trail leg, but this is just necessarily a um, just an average on how people set up to the golf ball. Say the readings here we've got was a seven iron. So on average, amateurs do two things that set up with their pressure. They have more pressure on their trail leg, so their back foot with the weight in the heels. Um, two players do the opposite, so they have their more weight on their lead foot and more weight on the the, the balls of their feet, or as the balls of the feet or the arches of the feet as you want to reference it. Um, they have more weight on the front foot with the pressure between the ball of the foot and the toe. The white um, dot that we're going to talk about represents the, the setup position. So um, this has a large effect on the efficiency of backswing. So when watching PGA Tour, PGA players on tour, um, you'll see players don't move much off the golf ball in the backswing but if you go to your local range you'll see you'll see almost different movements related to different sports so you'll see a lot of golfers that sway slide and um, they lift up they cast the club early on the downswing they don't understand how to use their body correctly but this video is basically a, a, a get how to get the correct movements into your golf swing so the great the great thing is about technology is it gives you a, an extra pair of eyes to look into so it gives you an extra thing to relate to if you're you're struggling so um, what we're going to talk about is two play when two players reach the back thing they will have between 70 and 8 percent pressure on their trail leg this holds for players to practice a one post or stack and tilt move what gives the professional a big advantage over the the amateur golfer as they immediately do this in transition on the downswing so below you will see below I've got a graph here um, what well, it's basically a comparison on how they transition from the top of the backswing to the downswing so the player went from close to 80% pressure to 52% pressure on his trail leg in the first move in the downswing so you can see the pressure is moving from forwards towards the ball in the front foot, well there's amateurs do the opposite. They if you struggle with the reverse pivot your your weight goes from your left side on the backswing and on your right side in the downswing. So I'm trying to emphasize the importance of how having the correct having too much weight in your trail leg from dress the setup position can affect your, your swing path, your angle attack, um power, your transfer of weight, inconsistent strikes and Pa the the hand path effectively, so the tour player on when he comes through transition, his weight stays centered in setup or almost favoring the left side, closer to impact. So on the front foot, with his arm amateur has um, most of its weight on on the right foot. This means the pressure. So the pressure that we adopt in the address position on our um, set up our weight distribution has a, a definite or a direct effect on the way we swing the club so what I'm going to do is the best the best players in the world have found 
um, that they deliver the club into a position very similar. So no matter the way you swing, I mean, you've got different swings. You've got Bob Watson, you've got Tommy Ganey, who has two tour of it, two PG tour events or two PG tour uh, wins, and you've got players like Adam Scott, who has been highlighted as having a perfect swing. But there is there is such a thing as having. I don't think there is such a thing as having a perfect swing. We're all different. We've all got physical limitations. We all swing the club differently. If we all hit the if we all had the same swing, then we would all be playing at the same level of ability, which is not what we want. Obviously, we want to be playing at a high level, but I think that having understanding your own game will get you on the the right track. So here, here I've got here is two players. Um, so the professional, I've done some research and I've collated some data, and eight percent. So the professional has 87% of pressure on their front foot with the weight between the ball of the foot and the toe. When 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 you go to the range at your local driving range, you see a lot of weight on the back foot. You can you see a lot of issues. So you see contact before the ball. You see top shots because the swing arc has been moved because there's so much weight on the back foot. You can't properly release the club. So what... What I'm trying to um, emphasise here is what you need to do is get more weight on the left side through impact because players that set up to the golf ball differently, as I was as I referenced before, that you've got all different types of swings. You've got flat swing, you've got a an in to out swing path, which is quite a flat swing plane, you've got an out out in swing path which would be classed as quite upright. But what I'm gonna do is what you need to do is you need to try and get more pressure on your 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 lead foot and by getting more pressure on your your lead foot it's effectively stack and tilt so many many good instructors use stack and tilt for players that struggle with reverse pivot so with reverse pivot your weight goes the wrong way but at least if you get your weight on your front foot start off with that's like it presets your left side for you coming from the transition from backswing to downswing and it gets your left hip out of the way so you can your right your right side to fall your right side will only follow your left side if it's correct. So your left side starts the the kinetic chain first. So it goes left side and it goes or from the left foot all the way up and then your right side follows. But anyway, that's not really what this video, the purpose of this video is about. So I've got three drills here for you to help get more pressure on your setup. So what you need to do is you need to find a down slope and what you need to do is practice with the ball below your feet, this should engage your left side more. And as you get to top of the backswing, you will feel the pressure on the left side and you'll be able to maintain that. So the lie will force the the, the more pr the pressure to be between the ball and the foot and the toe setup. It will help the player in their move from transition and the downswing. It improves the kinematic sequence. So, and it develops a, a new it develops an understanding of your impact position. The second drill I've got here is it will establish a better relationship between the feet and the ground. You want to do this I know in Scotland where um practicing in bare feet I wouldn't really advise it but when it's a good summer's day or try it in your house or something like that if you if you I mean a, a lot of people moan about the weather outside. I know it's I know we live in Scotland so it's it's not really the, obviously it's the golfing mecca of the world in my opinion but we don't have the greatest of weather so it's important you improvise when you're practicing so practicing bare feet or or sand or, or in sand in a bunker um this will help you understand this will help you understand the the kinematic sequence and it will create some friction um allowing the player to create more ground reaction so a lot of players remember a lot of good players on tour the average distance on tour nowadays is two nine hundred two hundred ninety five yards. That's just off the top of my head. But all the guys use the the ground efficiently. They try and get they try and use every big muscle in their in their shoulders or every muscle in their body to try and increase club head speed and try and get that one percent better. So this will help the sequence the kinematic sequence, acceleration and deceleration of the club head coming into impact. So 
you go from acceleration to deceleration, then acceleration through impact. So as you come back down, then the left side slows down, and then the right the right side takes over. That's that's I done I done a video on this a couple of weeks ago about um, the golf the golf swing is a a two side affair. I think it was the the left a firm left side, but a, a dominant left side, but poor body release. So I was trying to emphasise the importance to try and get your right side more engaged into the action. So that's an, that's two drills to work on, and hitting shots from bare feet will minimise lower body movement. So what it encourages a um, good balance, and it will help you understand your how your body moves through the golf swing. The player, if the player loses balance, then you're not creating the right amount of pressure. So you're used to using more of the upper muscles, so your trunk, your almost your wrists and hands. So you're using the smaller muscles because you don't know how to engage the, the thoracic region. I wouldn't suggest that you use the, the lumbar spiny, which is the, the bottom part of your back. That's the bottom part of the pelvis. That creates a lot of injuries that people that have a poor posture address. But anyway, this... Creating pressure for on the left side from doing a, a barefooted, the barefoot drill and practicing with sand and downslope will help you engage the left side so you can create the correct transfer of weight into impact and have a descending angle of attack instead of ascending where you get that reverse pivot where you lose distance because you cast it from the top. So anyway, that was that was quite a a quick video on how. What the difference between a, an amateur golfer is and a professional, how they start with the weight distribution more on the right if you're an amateur, which um, results in a catalogue of errors and the professional uses the ground more by starting from the ground upwards, the kinematic sequence, with more weight on the left side. That allows them to hit downward on the golf ball as opposed to the amateur golfer where they hit up on the golf ball which creates a top shot and the chunk depends on where you make contact but that's just a quick video to emphasize the importance of using the ground and that's basically it and um, if you've got any questions on the video let me know and post your comments below and um, i've currently got um 50 youtube videos now which is quite a lot of work over the last couple of weeks and um, over the last couple of months sorry but um if you want more information on golf tips and things like that you subscribe to my channel at jamie allen golf and i've also got a facebook page it's called jamie allen golf if you just like that and follow me on twitter at jamie allen golf and that's that's it basically so thank you